Hello and welcome to Make Creative. My name's Sam, I'm one of the co-founders of Make Creative and this video is a new video. Uh, we're going to be doing a weekly video on a Wednesday which is a devotion where we're going to have a read through some scripture and just chat about it, enjoy it and hopefully get some chats in the comments going as well. So I've chosen to do the Gospel of John and the reason I've chosen to do John is because it's probably my favourite Gospel by far. Um, we won't be going through like a whole chapter because there's so much in it, but we will be going through parts of a chapter and if it's a very short chapter, we'll go through a whole chapter as well. So that's what we're going to be doing, which will be fun as. Um, I love talking about reading things through scripture and so this is just another way that I get to do that and share it with some people and hopefully we can uh, build a community around that. So John, that's where we're going to start chapter one. I'm going to read out some of the scripture and we'll chat about it a little bit uh, and then we'll go from there. Hopefully what I'll try and do is we'll chat about maybe some of the context a little bit but also like how it applies to us as well as maybe some things about how I might preach it for anyone that's interested in knowing how, you know, how we go about working out how to preach things as well and just chat through some of that stuff. So yeah, John 1. So, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So I really, really love John 1. I think it's a really beautifully written piece of scripture, and that's the first five, five verses of it. Some things I kind of noticed... Um, I notice a lot in this first chapter of John has to do with just um, the way he's able to communicate a concept to people who wouldn't be able to grasp that concept usually. Uh, so what I mean by that is uh, using the, the word as an image is really interesting because uh, for the Jewish people, the Jewish audience, that's really important because they believe words have more power to them than just a word. They believe they stir up emotion and feeling. And that's very true of words. But what John was trying to get to was to communicate with an audience that probably would not understand Christianity very well. And that was the Greek culture. He'd actually been steeped in Greek philosophy for a while and he was trying to figure out a way that it could work with the gospel. And so he comes up with a concept that's built on from a Greek philosopher, a Greek philosopher that um, talked about the word, and the word in Greek is called logos. And logos is essentially this word that is more than just the word of life. It's reason, it's order. It's about um, this underlying word that brings reason and order to the universe. So for the Greeks, logos was this kind of mystical, religious word that um, essentially said to them it was the underlying logic of all of the universe. That's what logos means. And so John took that and a Jewish philosoph um, philosopher also actually took it first and said, hey, yes, logos, we know what that means. That's actually God. God is the logos. He is the word. He is the underlying reason to everything that exists. Uh, and then John took it and he took it and said, yes, God is the word. He is Logos, but the word became flesh. So that underlying reason, that thing that makes the world go round, the universe work, is actually Jesus. And so what he's done is he's taken this concept that was very, very secular and Greek in nature and he's turned it into this way of proclaiming that Jesus is Lord. And that's really fascinating. I find that really fascinating for a couple of reasons. But the main reason is that um, John looked for a way that he could speak to the people of his time with their language. And I find that really interesting when it comes to just evangelism in general. I think we often will talk about God without actually thinking about how this could be used in the language of the people we're talking to. And so for John, he was very concerned about how he would communicate with Greeks who 
would not have a good understanding of one God is the God and who created all things. And so this was a way that he could communicate that Jesus Christ is Lord of everyone and everything because he is the word that brings the universe together, that forms it, that is the reason of the logic behind it, which is just incredible and it's a beautifully written scripture. So that's really cool. And I think there's, there's something we can take away in that is that when we're talking about God, we need to, to know and to understand the people we're communicating to about God to. That it's actually our job to be the ones to change and get creative around the ways that we communicate who God is and change it into a way that people can understand. And I think that's a really difficult thing to do, but it's a very powerful thing to do, as we can see in chapter one. A couple of other things I noticed is that John mirrors the Genesis story here, essentially. He talks about creation uh, and he mirrors Jesus coming to the world being created. And he talks about Jesus as if Jesus was part of creation, which is something really interesting that we don't really think about too much that uh, the whole of the Trinity, not just God the Father, was a part of creation, that Jesus was there at creation, that he was part of creating. And so John equates him as, as this is a moment like when the world was created, Jesus coming is fundamentally changing to the cosmos, the universe, the world, not just a person. It's that big of a deal. It's the same. In the beginning, he was there and he becomes flesh now. And that's really important, is that this is fundamentally a life, not just a life-changing, a universe-changing moment. It's bigger than just changing lives. It's a world-changing moment. It's incredible. And he, he compares Jesus to light. And this is really interesting because the first thing God creates is light. God created light because there was just darkness and light came out of his mouth in the story of creation. And then when Jesus comes, he is the light to the world where there was just darkness. And so again, mirroring creation, but it's also this really pivotal thing of Jesus is the light. He is the light like light was given in creation, which is really important to think about because if he brought light to the world when he became man. He also brings light to each of us when we accept him into our hearts. And so, and it mirrors the him bringing light into the world became man, God giving light in creation. This idea of light coming in is fundamentally important to salvation, is fundamentally important to the reason and the logic behind the universe and was the very start of that creation story. And so salvation is universally important, not just individually important. That light coming to people is as important as light coming in creation. Salvation is that important. And we need to think of it as important as it is, because sometimes I think we downplay it to, yeah, it's really exciting when someone comes to Christ, but you know, it's, it's just what we hope for, but it's not just life changing, it's eternity changing. You are changing your eternity. And that's a big concept to think through. And it can only be thought through when we think through the idea that Jesus, the word of life, the word that is at the very core of everything, of all creation, of the entire universe became flesh so that he could bring grace and truth, as we're going to see a bit later. And so as we go on, it talks about a man named John, uh, who John the Baptist, who came before Jesus to testify him, but was not himself Jesus. That's really important. And then in verse 9, it talks about the true light that gives life to everyone was coming into the world. Jesus was coming, that light. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave, he gave the right to become children of God. 
children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. So again, the word becomes flesh. People did not recognize him as who he was, uh, but those that did become his children. So there's this adoption, there's this idea of being adopted into the family of God. And John is presenting this picture to people who would not be commonly thought as adopted into the kingdom of God, Greeks, so people who were not Jews, essentially. And so this was another chance to reinforce this idea that, hey, you're not only you know, brought in by this logic, this reason, the word of life, the word of God, but you're also brought in to the family because he's not just an all-encompassing word that feeds the universe. He is a personal, relational thing because that's one of the things that uh, changes for John compared to Greek philosophy is that when the word became flesh, he became like us and there's relationship in that. There's a person in that. And that's fundamentally different from just some abstract reasoning concept that holds the whole universe together. So that's the start of John 1. And and verse 14 goes, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And it's interesting he brings grace and truth to John, not love, not anything like that. Grace, which is compassion to those who don't, shouldn't be given it, and truth, which fits with light, because light shines on people exposing what is in their hearts, and you need grace when seeing what is exposed. It's really interesting that already some themes are coming through in John about how the light kind of shines on people and what it sees, but what it also decides to continue on doing despite of this is really interesting passage it's really well well written john is a very incredible writer we're actually going to skip down to the bottom of the chapter now because the other thing that i wanted to look at was jesus calling nathaniel uh, philip and nathaniel at the end of chapter one we're not going to go through the whole chapter we just don't have the time but just going through this last bit as well because i think it's important in light of what we've just been talking about so the next day jesus decided to leave for galilee galilee finding philip he said to him follow me philip like andrew and peter was from the town of bethsaida philip found nathaniel and told him we have found the one moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote jesus of nazareth the son of joseph nazareth can anything good come from there nathaniel asked come and see said philip When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then, ad- he then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. It's such an interesting uh, call for Nathaniel. Because what's interesting is um, Jesus saw him, Nathaniel talked to him, and at no point has Jesus called him yet. Nathaniel, and Nathaniel goes, how did you know my name? Jesus goes, I saw you under the fig tree. Um, Or he just said, how how does he know, how do you know me? And Jesus said, I saw you under the fig tree. Which is interesting because it's not a miracle. Like it's inherently not a miracle. If I saw someone under a tree and later met them, I'm like, oh, I saw you before. That's not a miracle. That's just seeing someone under a tree. And yet Nathaniel is amazed by that. And because of that, Jesus calls him which is really interesting. It's almost like the disposition of Nathaniel of amazement is what gets him the call. And it's it's like, wow, if you're amazed at this, just wait, you've got some things coming for you. And I just kind of, I don't know, I thought about this in 
in this way for me is that sometimes I feel like I get a bit jaded and kind of don't really take time to celebrate the things God does in my life very often well. And because I'm not amazed over any of the small things, like why would I be amazed when something bigger comes along? You know, um, and yet Nathaniel is amazed by this not even miracle, miracle. And because of that, Jesus goes, wait, I've got more to show you than this. And maybe it's just me, but I think like the thing about that is that, you know, we we run the risk of going through light with life without celebrating what God's doing in our life. And because we can't see the little things, when bigger things happen, we also don't see them because we're not used to looking. And our disposition of wonderment and of love towards God dictates what we can see. And because Nathaniel was amazed by something that wasn't really a miracle, but was just like, you notice me more than anything else, he was let into this space where he could see more incredible things. I think, you know, that's what I'd be talking about if I preached that section. Um, But yeah, anyway, what do you think about this chapter? Do you have anything that you've noticed as well? There's certainly a lot more in it uh, than that. But yeah, talk to me. Chat in the comments about what you saw uh, and what you really find helpful about this chapter. Um, We're going to be doing these weekly. So every week we'll be looking at a different chapter of John. Uh, Make sure you comment below. And I hope you guys have an awesome week. Thanks. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and check the description down below for all our social media links. 